Now, you cannot just do y over x is equal to y over x because that's not the relationship here. It's saying the rate of change of y is proportional to y. So it's like dy over dt over y. But we don't know what dy over dt is when we know y. Okay, we know values of t and y. Okay, so um, I just told you what the solution to the differential equation is, but it's always um, <clears throat> that it's always y is equal to c e to the kt. But I'm going to show you why. Okay, so let's set this one up and do it from scratch. The rate of change of y with respect to time is proportional to y. So we've got dy over dt is equal to k times y. We want to solve this for y. So um, right now we need to separate our variables. Okay, We need to move y to the side where dy is. So that means we're dividing by y or multiplying by 1 over y. And we need to move the dt to the other side. So we have 1 over y dy is equal to k dt. So we're going to integrate both sides. Now, what is the integral of 1 over y with respect to y? The natural log of y. Let's keep it in absolute value bars for right now. Okay, the integral of k with respect to t, k is a constant, so with respect to t, that's going to be t, and don't forget the plus c. Now, we want to solve for y. Okay, we want to solve for y. So, bless you, right now, y is stuck inside the natural log. How do we get it out of the natural log? e, we write it in exponential form, so that says e to the kt plus c is equal to y. Well, we can take this a couple of steps further. Okay, um, e to the kt plus c came from multiplying e to the kt by e to the c. Okay, I'm using my properties of exponents to go back. And e to a constant is just some other constant. So that is where that relationship that you just wrote down a second ago, the solution to the differential equation when uh, the rate of change of y is proportional to y, that is why this is the solution to that general equation. Okay? If that's the exact situation you're presented with, that is the solution to the general equation. Well, we don't want the general equation. We've got some specifics. So let's plug in our specifics. When t equals 0, y equals 2. So 2 is equal to c times e to the k times 0. So that says 2 is equal to e to the 0 is 1. So 2 is equal to our c. Now, it would be nice if we could figure out k. Well, we can do that now. Uh, we're going to use the next piece of information. When t equals 2, y equals 4. So 4 is equal to, now we know c. c is 2. e to the k times 2. So if we solve this, divide by 2. 2 is equal to e to the 2k. Well, we want to know what k is. So how do we solve for k here? Natural log. Natural log of 2 is equal to 2k. So the natural log of 2 divided by 2 is equal to k. Now, don't divide those 2s. Okay? It's not 2 divided by 2. It's the natural log of 2 divided by 2. So our particular solution is y is equal to, we found out that c was 2, e to the k is the natural log of 2 divided by 2 times t. That's our particular solution 
to this differential equation and we can then use that to find the value of y when t is 3. So let's crunch those numbers. Uh, 3 times the natural log of 2 divided by 2, raise e to that power, and multiply by 2. So when t equals 3, y is approximately 5.656. <coughs> That is the final answer, yes. Um, if it's inactive, they would leave the answer in, the, in, in this form. If it's active, then they'll give you decimal answer choices. But th this is doable without a calculator until that very last time. Okay. Now, I know that was lengthy, but part of the reason why it was lengthy was because we went through the whole process over there of figuring out what the general solution is. Um, but any time you have the situation where it says the rate of change of some variable is proportional to that variable, you can jump straight to this right here. The fact that that variable is equal to constant times e to the kt, if that's the exact scenario. All right? <coughs>